<coughs> oh, yes, I'm supposed to stand behind here. This is kind of unnatural for me. Anybody who knows me knows that I wander. But Patrick will kill me if I do that, and he's looking at me now. So uh, welcome along. Um, it was interesting, just as Noel came back into the room and he was talking about, you know, what, what makes successful uh, graduate, successful student. And one of those things is perseverance. And it's now what? Quarter past five. So I think we can, can, we, we can suggest that we have, uh, we have that perseverance. Um, so Marion asked me, would I, would I do something for this? And she said, I want you to do something a bit different. Uh, I want you to try and sum up uh, what you listen to and create some sort of a thread uh, through all of this. Um, and some of you will know, uh, for those that don't know, as your colleagues from Kosovo, one of my areas of research in terms of education is how to use improvisational techniques uh, in a classroom to develop kind of creative learning. Um, so basically what Marion is suggesting here is I should now walk the walk as well as talk the talk. Mm -hmm. So here it goes. Um, what I will say at the start, however, is that one of my heroes in jazz music and jazz improvisation is Miles Davis. And Miles Davis also says, um, don't fear mistakes, there aren't any. So I'm going to go with that from here on in if I get anything wrong. Um, okay, so um, what have we learned? I'd like to frame this, and I think I'd like to frame this as it's interesting the timing of uh, this seminar series. Um, not only in the context of the amount of pressures nationally here and obviously internationally in terms of university education, resources of its varying types, uh, financial, physical, uh, and human resources, um, but also perhaps even more concretely, uh, last week at a, an economic society meeting in uh, a sister college of ours, uh, University College Dublin, a professor of economics, which is my own discipline, uh, Professor Morgan Kelly um, suggested in a, in a, in a wide-ranging discussion that um, one of the long-term dangers for economic growth uh, in Ireland is the current third level education system. And within this wide-ranging discussion, he mentioned one thing as being an issue. He said, over the past 10 years, university education has been taken over by the teaching and learning mafia. And he did not mean that in a good sense. And he said the issue with this teaching and learning mafia is that they are telling us that we shouldn't fail students. And he indicated that it is time that we put demands back on students. And he suggested that if we want to change the quality of third level education, we must hire extraordinary researchers. Well, no, well, Professor Kelly was talking about the UCD experience. I felt given that we had a public forum, we should address this from the UCC experience. I agree with him. I agree that we should put demands on students. I agree we should challenge them. I agree we need extraordinary researchers. I agree that students should be exposed to extraordinary researchers. And I do agree that we can't and shouldn't fail students. Not in terms of judgment, however, but in terms of how we design the learning experiences and spaces that we create for students. It is in this that I disagree with Professor Kelly. What you've seen today, I think, and one of the things in improvisational music is there has to be what jazz musicians call a head, something that's kind of holding the improvisation together. Is yes, you heard a kaleidoscopic melody of various different teaching and learning interventions, ways of exploring high challenge for students. But what you also had as a connection between all those is a particular attitude. And it's not the attitude that separates research from teaching. It is an attitude that has echoes in the past to scholarship. Indeed, it was mentioned by a number of the speakers today about the four scholarships, Boyer, and what each of the individuals here have done, I believe, is yes, shown that they're extraordinary researchers, but also suggested that that divide between research and teaching, a divide that has been created within the systems of third level education, nationally and internationally, are artificial and can be overcome. Do these individuals today, who are just a sample of the people that have gone through the doors of the Teaching and Learning Centre here in UCC, have they indicated high challenge? Have they placed demands on students? I think any curriculum 
that moves students from individual to collaborative type learning and assessment as we heard with problem based learning, as we've heard from Niall and the work of Karen, moving students from being passive to being reflective as explored by people like James, move people to integrating themselves with their learning as we saw with Mike in terms of linking their interactions with uh, technology and their learning and history, I would suggest all of that is high challenge. But for high challenge, one requires high support. And in the interventions that the individuals explored here, you saw that high support. And what was important for me was not the interventions themselves, whether it be problem-based learning, or working in the field in terms of seminars, or inter inter interlinking social media with their learning, but that attitude. And the attitude started with something that each of these individuals had in common. They, to coin a phrase from Randy Bass, disrupted themselves. They took a frustration, which Niall suggested, a concern about where the students were at, as Noel suggested, a concern of what students were learning, as James has suggested. And they said, yeah, there's an issue here. And they could have left it, they could have parked it. Or they could have judged the students. We saw here how students were indicating that they externalized the weaknesses and they internalized the successes. We don't need to be any different. But these individuals said, no, I won't internalize my success and externalize my weaknesses. I'll challenge it. They were given support, some at departmental level, and all at the level of Unabara. I said, let's explore this. Let's go with this. Let's be reflective. Let's be mindful in our teaching. And let's be motivated to do so. Where mindful says, let's speak about student learning and our teaching and our support of student learning from a position of authority. And that position of authority starts, continues, ends with researching. Taking the canons of research, whether you are a scientist or whether you're in the humanities, and saying, can I use this? Not only to explore all those topics and areas that interest me within my discipline, but to explore my student learning within that discipline or indeed interdisciplinary studies. And each one of the individuals did that. Most particularly, each one of the individuals did something that is crucially important for jazz improvisation. <laughs> Because jazz improvisation is all about being mindful and sensitive. Sensitive to what you are learning from others. And each one of the individuals here takes the student voice seriously. Fiona decided, in terms of her talk, that what she was going to do is she was going to focus on the student voice. That's what she thought was the important message. Noel says about the importance of starting where the students are at. Eleanor says, we've got to explore and find out where the other teachers are at if we want to move a faculty. What all of them have in common is they took all the obstacles that people like Eleanor spoke about, or administrative issues, or competing commitments in research, all these other demands that are put on us, all which jazz musicians say are, yes, but. Yes, I would be interested in doing more about studying my uh, students' learning and my teaching, but I have all these other obstacles. And what they said instead, and what all the individuals who have come through the kind of teaching and learning process in UCC said instead is, yes, and. Yes, there is this issue, this frustration, this issue, this difficulty, and. And what am I going to do about it? And can I take everything that I am as an academic, teacher and researcher, and combine that to try to come up with answers? What was most interesting, I think, was the ongoing nature of this. Mike spoke about, I still have this problem 10 years <coughs> on, and not letting it go. Karen spoke about how she moved on her master's research. Eleanor spoke about how she moved on her faculty and she's bringing people through these doors now. So it's an ongoing process, a dynamic process. That's why it will survive. So yes, Professor Kelly, I agree with you. 
we should put demands on students. I would add to that, we should put demands on ourselves, challenge ourselves. Yes, Professor Kelly, I believe we need extraordinary researchers. I believe you've heard some of them today, and they are but a snapshot of that. And yes, Professor Kelly, I believe that we should challenge ourselves in terms of the support we give ourselves to be extraordinary in faculty. And what all of these individuals had in common was at some stage they were invited in by Marion, Betty, Anya Highland, Grace Devil, people like that in UCC, and they said yes and. And it's an ongoing process. And it was with that I was reminded, and I did have this bit prepared, um, of a poem. And it's a poem I came across from a, a Mexican poet, translated by the Mexican poet, his name is Antonio Machado. I might be pronouncing that wrong. Translated by Betty Jean Craig. And as regards to the nature of investigation, and that it is ongoing and that we're always finding new puzzles and new things to explore. Wanderer, your footsteps are the road and nothing more. Wanderer, there is no road. The road is made by walking. By walking, one makes the road. And upon glancing back, one sees the path that must never be trod again. Wanderer, there is no road. When he wakes upon the sea, with programs like this, with the people that have involved themselves in this, whether it be at the level of Marion and Betty and so forth, or the individuals you've heard today, this wandering will continue. And I believe it is with that that a third level education will develop, sustain, and improve itself over time for us, yes, and most importantly, of course, for our students. Thank you. Thank you.